Um, so um, I, I really want to talk to you guys about the advances that we've done in endovascular or where I think the, fee, the field is going. And I'll, like, I'm, I'm going to try to wrap this up so we can like uh, have a discussion and uh, uh, um, so Stephen Hawking's in, uh, uh, in 2018 said that the future of communication is in the brain computer interface. And with tools, this new technology, technological revolution can make life better. Um, now, this is not something new. Um, uh, I, I actually know one of the neurosurgeons who was implanting grids over the brain and attempting to connect that to, um, uh, to like uh, electrodes, to, to pacemakers, and hoping that this will communicate. Unfortunately, when you deploy anything over the brain um, uh, or you implant anything over the brain, you risk uh, thrombosis happening, scar tissue formation, and ultimately it becomes very difficult for uh, the, like it impairs communication. Um, this is something that's really recent uh, that was actually performed by a colleague of mine at Mount Sinai, um, something called the stentrode. A stentrode is deployed in the superior sagittal sinus, um, connected to a, a wire, connected to a pacemaker, and then ultimately that will, over the first few months, will slowly collect data and brain waves and interpret that into signals. This was essentially, uh, Tom Oxley did this uh, initially, I believe his work was funded by the Department of Defense uh, in an attempt to help quadriplegic so soldiers. Um, and what we're able to do today here, I'm going to show you this, basically, um, it's almost like a black mirror type of thing where um, you go into the superior sagittal sinus, deploy a stent across the origin, uh, like across the superior sagittal sinus. And over time, this becomes incorporated within the, the, the sinuses and um, and you can see over here, this is a 3D spin of the sinus, uh, the superior sagittal sinus. Um, and this is connected to a pacemaker that ultimately will be able to communicate directly, interpret signals on the brain to um, um, basically an exoskeleton, for example, or um, a computer. So you're able to control a computer with your brain. Um, So before I move on to this, uh, so I, I, I apologize, some of these slides are not updated, but basically what they recently did, so the first patient, so the, a randomized controlled trial is actually being conducted. Um, the first device was actually implanted in a patient with uh, like a quadriplegic patient. And uh, uh, Tom Oxley basically allowed that patient to take over his Twitter account. And without typing anything, the patient was able to communicate with the entire world. People were able to ask him any question and he was able to essentially use his brain to type on a computer and uh, uh, communicate with the entire world, with, with the entire Twitter, uh, Twitterverse, basically. Um, um, uh, needless to say, uh, like, and, and I, I've mentioned this to Tom multiple times, I'm like, I, like I, I can't tell you how upset I am because I didn't think of this earlier. This is such a, like, it, it sounds like it's, it's so commonsensical. Why did we not do this before? Um, but obviously it's a lot of work, a lot of like uh, research and development that needs to be put into this before we're able to get to this stage. But this will ultimately happen over the next five to 10 years there's no doubt in my mind that we will, in, as neurovascular surgeons, we will be implanting stentrodes in patients. And ultimately, this is going to be the next, like, instead of using a phone, you can essentially just con communicate with uh, patients with your brain directly. Um, in my mind, I think ultimately, and you heard this from me first, uh, just in case anybody decides to take that idea, but I think functional uh, neurosurgery um, and uh, is ultimately going to metamorph into functional neuroendovascular surgery. Uh, there is no reason if we can like identify, like if we can implant a stent in the superior sagittal sinus that will ultimately be able to receive and communicate with the outside world, receive information and communicate with the outside world. Why are we not able to essentially do the reverse and like transmit a signal into the stent, into the stentrode? So if I can deploy the stent into the uh, like P1, P2 segment of the PCA and impact the thalamus, or into the M1 segment and impact the caudate head. The same way you can do it with like a, a like a, 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 a deep brain stimulation. Um, why would you not do this? And this is essentially a procedure that is completely non-invasive, um, and um, uh, you just need to be on aspirin and plavix for like three months. 
Um, over time, this will, this is something that I, I know will happen. It's just a matter of time. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you liked that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.